Well, while the Advocate General was chewing over his future and whether he could stick with the government, there are interesting talks going on inside here between the government and those Tory rebels who rebelled against elements of the Internal uh, Market Bill on Monday. The government effectively has conceded to them. It looks as though that rebellion has pretty much folded up, maybe not entirely, but effectively. And uh, those concessions uh, mean that MPs will get a vote before uh, the uh, certain bits of the bill are put into play. But, but, as far as the EU is concerned, that's neither here nor there. They think that bill should never become law at all. And the most important thing that probably happened today is that the government has put the brakes on that bill. It looks pretty likely that it won't become law until what is effectively the end of the timetable for the talks with Brussels. Effectively, the government has created a bit of space for those talks. So the EU doesn't have to kick over the table and the government doesn't have to effectively shut down the talks by putting that bill into law. All of which makes you uh, wonder whether there is now space for a deal. Michel Barnier, the chief EU negotiator, was talking to EU ambassadors in Brussels tonight in a private meeting and he told them there had been movement on Britain's part, not least on fisheries uh, in last week's negotiations. The government here is saying there's been movement from Europe. The government here is saying that's largely thanks to their Rambo tactics. The EU is saying be careful with those Rambo tactics. They could destabilise the whole thing and undermine trust, but it was a very interesting, if chaotic, day as we approach the Brexit talks endgame. The two signatories to the withdrawal agreement clashed today. The EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said Boris Johnson wasn't honouring his signature on that agreement. She told the European Parliament Never the Prime Minister was betraying Britain's best interests and the legacy of Margaret Thatcher. I remind you of the words of Margaret Thatcher. I quote... Britain does not break treaties. It would be bad for Britain, bad for relations with the rest of the world, and bad for any future treaty on trade. This agreement has been ratified by this House and by the House of Commons. It cannot be unilaterally changed, disregarded or disapplied. This is a matter of law and trust and good faith. Just before the Prime Minister took questions from select committee chairs, it was reported the government's senior legal officer in Scotland, Lord Keane, had decided he couldn't defend the government's proposed breach of international law and had handed in his resignation. Can you could tell us whether the Advocate General for Scotland is still in post or not? Uh, I'm afraid, uh, Mr Ben, I can tell you, all I can tell you really, as far as I know, that conversations on that matter are still continuing. Lord Keane seemed to be struggling to stick to a line he'd said as recently as yesterday. And I have to say to this House uh, that, in my opinion, uh, the present bill does not of itself constitute a breach of international law or of the rule of law. While the Prime Minister was locked in a committee room with MPs, his top Scottish legal officer did resign. A week after the head of the government legal service did the same. Confusion was added to when the Prime Minister was asked if he agreed with the Northern Ireland Secretary, who today said the EU was negotiating in good faith. So are they negotiating in good faith? And so I'm afraid, alas, you don't as I said, that. I don't believe that. You don't. So why did the Northern Ireland Secretary tell the Northern Ireland Affairs Select Committee that in his opinion the EU is negotiating in good faith? Well, I, it is always possible. That, Which is um, it is always possible that I am mistaken, and perhaps right. uh, they will, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, Ms. Smith, perhaps they will, they will, they will prove my suspicions wrong. Just before the prime minister went to the committee, he was sitting with backbench rebels who opposed the breach of international law. He accepted there might be a vote of MPs before such a thing happened, and the government would try to arbitrate first. Most importantly, the government appears to be putting the brakes on the bill becoming law. That, for Michel Barnier and the EU, could be the key concession. The moment the internal market bill becomes law, even diluted as it was today, the talks with the European Union could be in jeopardy. There are now a few weeks to avoid that, and some signs it could just be possible.